Captain Scott Barnes has served in law enforcement for 28 years, 25 of them here in Rochester and Olmstead County. We rarely hear a personal side from him. We often hear from him about incidents that have happened. But at today's ceremony, things got very personal. I don't know that I've ever heard you speak personally about family. But your father-in-law is uh, important, especially on this day. Tell me about him. Uh, yeah, my father-in-law, who I never had the opportunity to meet, Eugene Sutton, worked for the Rochester Police Department for a number of years. And uh, I believe it was November of 85, he returned home from his night shift. Uh, my wife uh, had the opportunity to see him. And he asked her, he goes, what does a heart attack feel like? She she told him, and he... And, and uh, if I remember the story correct, she gave him the symptoms and he said something to the effect of, I don't think that's it. Fortunately, about not more than an hour after that, um, he suffered a major heart attack and he passed away after a shift. So uh, my wife is a survivor and it's um, always been difficult for her because her dad was taken from her so young. So it, this week is very special to her Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today because she is uh, doing her part to help everybody and taking care of COVID patients and respiratory therapists and a big shout out to them for all the hard work that they do during the past year. So um, this is very special to her that her dad is remembered. And, it, and of course, it's special to me. If it's important to her, it's important to me. We throw the word hero around a lot. Mm -hmm. Before COVID, it was, uh, whether it's a sports figure, law enforcement, but our medical personnel as well. So I didn't know that your wife was in the medical field. Yep, yep. she has been for a long time. Uh, and she's very dedicated to her staff, very dedicated to her patients. Um, you know, it, she sees trauma too. Yeah. Um, so sometimes the household is a little interesting when, when the, you know, I, I bring the, the trauma and the drama home <laughs> and she has the same thing. And uh, she's always been a pillar of strength and, I, and that will never change for her. When she and that's certainly because of part of how her mother and father raised her. When she married you, she knew very well that she was marrying into law enforcement. Was there reluctance because of that and because of her dad? No, because I think she was able to see that, um, just like most cops, I try to deliver uh, law enforcement services with compassion and caring, um, but fairness and firmness. And so she wasn't... I won't say that she wasn't concerned. There were many nights that I would have to get up in the middle of the night and leave for high-risk incidents where I was right on the front line with stuff. Um, a lot of phone calls at night, and when they call at night um, in law enforcement, it's never a good call. So you always wonder when the phone rings what's going on. Um, but no, she, she stayed strong, and she's been a real pillar of strength for me, especially during these very difficult times. This past year? Yep. Well, the past few years. Yep. I appreciate this. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for all your years of service and for continuing to serve as things do get difficult. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you to the people out there that, that, are, that are staunch supporters of us. Um, and we do try the best we can. I don't know of any cops that are under my command that go out to have a bad day. Um, and we'll get through this. We'll get through it, and changes will be made, and we'll get better. But society needs to get better, too. So we can all do it together if we put our mind to it. I appreciate you. All right. Thank you.